Okay, so let's get right into today's topic. Today I want to deal with it's being aware of the time. Being aware of the time. All right, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 says this, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will come, uh, will not come until there's a falling away first, and the man of sin is revealed, and the sin of petition is up. Now what does that mean? It means this. Jesus Christ is not going to come until there is a falling away. Lots of people are going to reject the gospel. Lots of people are going to turn from the gospel. You see, when Jesus Christ comes and takes the church away, the Holy Spirit goes with. And there are going to be people here who have said they are Christians and not necessarily walking the walk, and they're going to be left behind. They have not really made the commitment. They are religious folk who say they are born again, have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into their heart. And the Bible says things are going to get so tough that their hearts are going to grow cold. And because of the lawlessness that's prevailing at the time and everything that's going wrong, they're actually going to fall away from the gospel totally. So there's this big falling away from serving the Lord. Then the Antichrist is going to be revealed and then Jesus Christ is coming back to fetch the Jews. Okay, so, we need to understand the picture. Because in this, I want you to see that there is a warning of deception. So, be careful, and I'm starting to see this teaching starting to come into the churches. Number one, that there's no rapture. Be careful, because that's not scriptural. If you understand the Bible, you will see that there's no debate about the rapture. Now, they will use all sorts of things in the argument. All right? One of the biggest things that they'll say is the word rapture doesn't appear. Yes, it does not appear. It comes from the word apitio, which means caught up. The English word for apitio means rapture. That's where it comes from. It's not a biblical term. But, the issue is, the devil wants us to not believe in the rapture of Jesus Christ coming for the church. And the main reason for that is, the Bible says, if you do not look for the coming of the Lord, you're going to miss him. If you do not look for the coming of the Lord, you're going to miss him. As the saints, I want to challenge us today. The Bible says, we can be deceived. That's why he says, do not be deceived by any means. So they try all sorts of tricks to get you to believe that there's no rapture and that the church is going to go through the tribulation. That is not scriptural. I can give you so many theological reasons and arguments as to why that is not correct. And so we need to be careful this morning that we don't fall for the modern trend of teaching. We do not agree with the modern trend of teaching. We need to go back to the Word. Don't take my opinion for it. What does the Word say? That's one of the biggest reasons why I wrote the book of Revelation, so that I can explain in detail what is happening and what to expect. I have heard of some Christians who have been serving God for 50 years plus, really trusting God in everything, and all of a sudden changing this view. All of a sudden being convinced that there's no rapture. I tell you what, my heart bleeds for them. Because all of a sudden, everything that they have believed in is suddenly falling apart. And I don't want anybody to miss the return of Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says we need to know the times and the seasons. And we need to look up. Do you know the parable of the, the virgins? They were all supposed to be part of the bride. The bride of Christ. 50% of them stayed behind. Why? Because they, they stopped. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. They stopped focusing on the Holy Spirit. And so this morning I want to challenge us. Do not get to the time where you start doing things in your own strength. Prepare and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you every day. I want you to be with us when we go up in the rapture. I want you to be with us when we see the Lord Jesus Christ in the sky. And so, please don't fall for these teachings. Allow the Spirit of God to genuinely help you and let you understand the times and the seasons. And so this morning when we come around the table, we are celebrating what Jesus Christ has done for us. <coughs> Excuse me. But what we are celebrating is the fact that, that Jesus is coming back for me. And not only is he coming back for me, but I'm ready for him. I'm waiting for him, knowing that he's coming to fetch me in Jesus' name. On the night that Jesus betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical, emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for our salvation, protection, and provision. And so this morning when we come around the table, let us celebrate what Jesus has done. Let us celebrate what he's still going to do. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we are going to see the victory. Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us all our sin. Lord, I pray right now that you're going to help us to move into a new dimension. Lord, we will not be deceived. We will not be conned. But God, we will focus on you only in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray right now that you're going to move by your spirit in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that we are going to see the power of God move. And Lord, we are going to see your blessing in everything that we do. And Lord, right now I pray that as we take of the elements, Lord, I pray that we'll be stirred to look for you and your return. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your dunamis power to flow through our physical bodies. Thank you, Lord, that we are healed. And Lord, I command every symptom of sickness to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, it's Friday. I'm so excited. Wait, weekend is here and our guys are on the road. All right, number one. Uh, Marianne Lita and Charles are going to be in Stillby and they're also going to be somewhere else. I just can't remember the, the second place. All right, this weekend. So please check on our schedule now. We're going to tell you where they are. Please go and join them. Okay. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time with them. And then Pastor Les is going to be in Ochoa. All right. So please get ready with that. He's going to be there the weekend. So please come and join us. All right, if you're anywhere in the area, even if you haven't booked, come and join us. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time together in Jesus' name. All right, now, I want to just say that as we're going around, we are really just so excited about those that are on fire and ready to fight and do what God has called them to do. Amen. But right now, I want to challenge each and every one of us. We have got the fire conference coming up next week. If you are coming, or if you can even try and get there, get there. These are very important times. All right, these are very important seasons where you come and sit under the anointing. Let the Holy Spirit come and minister to you. Let God come and touch you. Let God come and fire you up and instruct you what to do next. 
Because God is raising up the church of Jesus Christ. And we are going to see the power and the fire of God move like never before. And so I want to challenge us. Try and get to these meetings. All right. Come on, guys. Let's get ourselves fired for the next round. This is where you get charged up, fired up, and ready to run. So I want to bless you. I want to just say, listen, if you can make it, Rebecca still from Thursday, we are going to be there. Even if you're rocking for a service or two or three, I want to just say, come and join us. It's going to be a wonderful time. Then tonight, I want to remind you that I'm still teaching on kings and priests. So please get ready for that. And then I will be broadcasting directly from the, the conference. So that's also going to be absolutely amazing. All right. So I want to tell you that I love you lots. And we are going to pray right now for our nation. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We lift up our nation before you. Father, I pray for South Africa. Thank you, Lord, that every prophetic word that has been given over this nation will come to pass. Lord, I release the anointing of God over this nation, the blessing of God, the power of God. And Father, I pray that our nation will be blessed. Lord, I thank you that we will see the blessing and the power of God in every sector, every area, and everything that we do in Jesus' name. Lord, I release the anointing of God over each one of us, over our businesses. Thank you, Lord, that our businesses are blessed, that the anointing saturate them. Lord, supernatural deals, divine connections, supernatural contracts to go. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray right now that you are going to minister to each one of us. Lord, that we will not be the same again. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for every promise that has been given to our nation. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks, let's pray for Israel. As we stand in the gap for that nation, I believe that God is going to do something miraculous <coughs> in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for Israel. I thank you, Lord, that this nation will be blessed. And Lord, that this war will come to an end. We bless the IDF. And Father, we release your protection over them. Lord, I pray for everybody that's involved, both sides. Lord, I pray for families that are mourning lost ones. Lord, I pray that people will actually listen and where they can get away from where there is trouble. Father, I pray your blessing over that area and I pray peace into the Middle East. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, let's get to our declaration. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, uh, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God in my life. So saints, go out with might, go out with valor, and see the power of God move in your life. So I love you lots.